Hello everyone! Welcome back to yet another video here on PetFacts TV. Um, today we are going to be talking about a really cool topic that I've not really done yet. Um, I want to know what you guys think about this first though. So at the end of this video, go down in the comments, let me know what you thought of this because I really do want to know. Today we are going to be discussing the top 10 most venomous snakes on planet Earth. But before we get into that, we have to talk about what makes one snake more venomous than another. For our purposes, we will be referencing a list created by George Zug and Carl Ernst in 1996. Their list is based off of an LD50 ranking, which is a way of measuring how toxic a snake's venom is. To calculate the LD50, a population of lab mice is injected with the toxin in question. The LD50 is recorded when the amount of venom kills half of the test population. Basically, the lower the LD50, the more toxic the venom is. Now it is important to mention that LD50 is an imperfect measurement. Different species and different individuals in a species are going to be affected by venom in different ways. So LD50 is a way to measure how toxic a venom is, but it is not the only way and it is not perfect. It is also important to mention that just because a species has a higher LD50 than another, it does not necessarily mean that it's more dangerous. Danger is a really, really complicated thing to measure and there are a number of different factors that go into it. A snake with a lower LD50 may not actually be that dangerous because it doesn't come into contact with humans that often or because of other reasons. Likewise, a snake with a higher LD50 and in turn a lower venom toxicity may actually be more dangerous than another species because it comes into contact with humans or for other reasons. Finally, this kind of goes without saying because of the nature of this channel, but I do not make this video in any way to demonize or to make people be scared of snakes. Many of the snakes that are on this list are actually not responsible for more than a few bites a year, if that. Furthermore, Every single species of snake on this list is largely harmless to anybody who understands proper snake safety and understands how to avoid a bite. With that being said, let's get started. The snake with the 10th lowest LD50 on planet Earth is the common Indian crate with an LD50 of 0.09 milligrams. This is an awesome species that is found throughout India and can also be found in Pakistan, Bangladesh, and Myanmar. This snake species is a member of the big four. This is a group of snakes that have been put together because they are responsible for the overwhelming majority of medically significant snake bites in India. This snake possesses a powerful neurotoxin that can be responsible for paralysis, paralysis of the eyes, respiratory failure, and if left untreated, death. 70 to 80 percent of untreated Indian crate bites result in death. That is an incredibly high number that is honestly just really fascinating to think about. In one case study, a 35-year-old Indian farmer was bitten on the ear by this snake and took 19 days to fully recover. During this time, they experienced a large number of symptoms, including total paralysis. Coming in at number 9 is the yellow-bellied sea snake with an LD50 of 0.07 milligrams. These absolutely stunning snakes range across the Indian and Pacific Ocean. They are most commonly found in tropical or subtropical waters near the coast, but can be found as far north as California during certain weather patterns. These snakes primarily feed on fish and have an incredibly powerful neurotoxin under their employ. The palamis toxin found in this snake's venom binds to neurons and serves to completely block off their ability to transmit signals. When this happens, muscles and nerves are completely unable to communicate with each other. Cardiac arrest, suffocation, and kidney failure are potential results from bite from this snake. As scary as that may sound, these snakes are not anything to concern yourself with. Thanks to their life history, people very, very seldom come in contact with them. And even when they do, they're largely non-aggressive. Number eight on our list is the Boom Sling, which is an awesome, awesome African snake with an LD50 of 0.07 milligrams. Boom Slings are a small arboreal snake who can be found throughout Sub-Saharan Africa. These snakes primarily feed on lizards, but may also take birds or bird eggs. These snakes are also one of the very rare cases of sexual dimorphism in snakes. This means that males and females have different coloring and patterns and can look completely different even in the same population. While this snake is intoxicatingly beautiful, its venom is no joke. This snake's venom is primarily a powerful hemotoxin. 
This snake's venom can destroy red blood cells, cause blood clotting to stop, and can also destroy tissues and organs. This is most famously cataloged by Dr. Carl P. Schmidt. Schmidt was a famous herpetologist in the early 1900s who was famously bitten and killed by this snake while trying to identify it. Unlike most fatal snake bite victims, Carl P. Schmidt took thorough notes cataloging his experience with this snake's venom before it killed him. In his notes, he mentioned nausea, vomiting, a high fever, and abdominal pain as symptoms. After his death, an autopsy revealed that Schmidt was also experiencing extreme internal bleeding, hemorrhaging, and finally, respiratory paralysis, which killed him. By the way, real quick aside, let me know down in the comments if you guys would like to see a video just on this whole detail here, because I find it absolutely incredible that somebody on their deathbed would think to catalog what is going on with the snake bite they're experiencing. Number seven on our list just so happens to be the only member of this list that I have personally seen in the wild that being the tiger rattlesnake. The tiger rattlesnake is the most venomous rattlesnake of them all, with an LD50 of 0.06 milligrams. These medium-sized rattlesnakes can be found in Sonora, Mexico, New Mexico, and in Arizona, where they inhabit Rocky Mountain foothills. They feed mainly on lizards and rodents and are a favorite species for herpers of the southwestern United States because of the incredible incredible variability that they can display. This snake's venom is a cocktail of myotoxins and neurotoxins, which attack the blood, muscles, and the nervous system. While bites from this snake are rare and it does have a relatively low venom yield, it is extremely scary if you were bitten. Neurotoxins in this snake's venom attack the central nervous system, which can cause respiratory failure, heart failure, and paralysis. Myotoxins affect the muscles, most often around the location of the bite. This means that this snake's venom has a two-ply attack. First of all, it attacks the nervous system, and second of all, it can cause necrosis and other scary, scary symptoms at the site of the bite. While this venom did just evolve to stop prey dead in its tracks, its employment as a defensive utility is impressive. Number six is the black mamba, whose venom has an LD50 of 0.06 milligrams. Just the name black mamba is enough to spook most people. This is a big, smart, super athletic snake that is native to sub-Saharan Africa. These snakes can grow as big as 10 feet in length, can move as fast as 12 miles an hour in short bursts, and feed primarily on rodents and birds. Many people consider this to be the most dangerous snake on earth. The venom of the black mamba is primarily a powerful neurotoxin. This can cause nausea, vomiting, abdominal pain, and can even cause people to convulse. Paralysis and goose flesh, or increased sweating and salivation, are also other symptoms. This snake's venom is powerful enough to be lethal to anyone who comes into contact with it. The eastern brown snake is the next snake to grace our list, with an LD50 of 0.05 milligrams. The eastern brown snake is also one of the most feared snakes in Australia and in the entire world. They can be found across eastern Australia and in Papua New Guinea in a large number of habitats. Basically anything except for rainforest constitutes potential habitat for this snake. They are also a terrific generalist species. This means that they are able to eat basically anything that they can fit in their mouth. The eastern brown snake's venom is a terrifying neurotoxin. Early cardiac arrest is another potential result of this bite. If resuscitation is not immediate, this could be fatal. Hemorrhaging is also extremely common in snake bite from this snake. Kidney damage, kidney failure, or even paralysis are also rarer results from this snake's bite. We all know exactly how scary Australian snakes are, and it is largely because of the reputation that the eastern brown snake's venom has earned it. Next up is another snake native to Australia. This time, the Reef Shallow Sea Snake, with an LD50 of 0.04 milligrams. As I mentioned, this snake is native to coral reefs and shallow marine ecosystems in New Caledonia, New Guinea, and Australia. They are absolutely beautiful and relatively small snakes that reach sizes of about two feet and are covered in elegant patterning. They feed almost entirely on fish and eels and are known for being extremely aggressive when handled. Their venom is primarily neurotoxic, but may also have myotoxic effects. This snake is very scary to me in particular because there are very few clinical reports of snake bite from it. While this does do a fairly good job of showing that even the most venomous of snakes pose very little danger to humans, it is also insanely scary to think about being bitten by a snake and not knowing exactly what could happen. 
The third most venomous snake on earth is yet another Aussie snake. This one being the Inland Taipan with an LD50 of 0.03 milligrams. This shy, rarely encountered snake inhabits the clay deserts of central Australia, where it primarily feeds on small mammals. When compared to some of the other snakes, especially in Australia, this snake is incredibly calm and very, very few bites occur because of this. It is also found in one of the most rural tracts of land in Australia. With that being said, one single envenomation from this snake contains enough toxins to kill up to 250,000 rodents. I'm not really sure what the exchange rate from rodents to people is, but I think it's pretty fair to say that that is enough to kill a lot, a lot of people. Its extreme toxicity to humans likely stems from its extremely efficient ability to kill small mammals. It's not intentionally designed to kill people, it's more of just a side effect of being able to kill mammals so efficiently. Major symptoms include hemorrhaging, paralysis, and renal damage or failure. If left untreated, upwards of 80% of all snake bite committed by the Inland Taipan would be fatal. The situation that this snake finds itself in is rather unfortunate. While it is extremely, extremely toxic, it is also an extremely placid snake that almost everybody on the face of the earth will never even be in range for. Even if you are, this land is so, so rural and so, so dry that the odds of coming into contact with this snake might as well be zero. The number two spot on this list brings us back to the Indian subcontinent for the Russell's Viper, who has an LD50 of 0.02 milligrams. These snakes are commonly known as one of the most dangerous snakes in the world and is without a doubt the scariest snake in the country of India. They are a terrific generalist viper species who can be found in a large number of habitat types eating a large number of prey. Juveniles are even known to be cannibalistic. Possibly even scarier than this snake's venom is its propensity to live alongside humans. They are usually drawn in by commensal rodents. Due to this snake's extremely, extremely wide range, there is actually quite a bit of variation in their venom itself. Neurotoxins are the primary toxins found in this snake's venom in mainland India, but if you travel to Sri Lanka, it flips and myotoxins take over. It is important to note that due to this tremendous amount of variation, there also may be variation in LD50 itself, with some populations being much, much more toxic than others. Local venom effects are massive and include tremendous pain, blistering, bruising, severe swelling, and necrosis. Major symptoms include possible paralysis, hemorrhaging, and renal damage or failure. There is an extremely high lethality potential associated with the venom of this snake. Finishing off the list at number one is the hook nose sea snake, who has an LD50 of 0.02 milligrams. These snakes are found in shallow waters and estuaries across the southern coast of Asia and in Indonesia. As with many sea snakes, they are fish specialists and can be extremely, extremely aggressive when provoked. Due to a very, very small amount of clinical reports of this snake's envenomation, not much is known about its venom. With that being said, it packs quite the punch. Moderate to severe neurotoxicity is common and renal damage or failure can occur. Headaches, vomiting, dizziness, convulsions, and even more are other common symptoms. To me as a snake lover, this snake is fascinating. Not only does this snake possess one of the most toxic venoms on the face of the earth, but it is so, so uninclined to bite that very few people are ever envenomated. In fact, most of the reports of this snake's envenomation have been from fishermen who picked the snake up thinking that it was a fish in a net. Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, we're gonna come in a little bit. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Um, if you made it through, you might as well go down there and subscribe. It would mean a whole lot to me. Winter is coming and I did want to try out this medium. Um, so go down in the comments and let me know what you thought. Um, there's certainly going to be more top 10 lists coming up this winter. Um, Carson and I have a lot of really, really fun ideas of videos that he and I are going to make together with these kind of things. So um, I just want to know what you guys think. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to go down and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, and leave me a comment about some top 10 videos that you guys would like to see because I'm always wondering what you guys want to see. And with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Hopefully we can make this one a herping vlog because honestly, I am going crazy without the herping vlog around, but we'll see what happens.